Welcome to the Open Photo Project, the podcast. The Open Photo Project uses photography, audio, and text to present the beautiful, complex lives of consensually non-monogamous people. On this podcast, you will hear the words of people who are in many kinds of relationships under the umbrella of consensual non-monogamy, from polyamory, relationship anarchy, open relationships, solo poly, and more. I'm Erica Capen. I have been photographing and interviewing people for the Open Photo Project since 2015. If you would like to see the photos of people who are in these interviews, you can find them on the openphotoproject.com or all across social media. Many of these interviews were recorded on location, so if you hear a creak or children or a noisy cafe in the background, I hope you can enjoy the ambiance as well as the words and ideas. And please consider supporting this project on Patreon. Becoming a monthly supporter at any level means that you will have access to the full interview downloads rather than these question excerpts. If you would like to become a supporter, just go to patreon.com. Thank you for listening to the Open Photo Project. Um, can we talk a little bit about the fact that you are currently living here in this home that you rent uh, and and with your husband and your metamorph, right? Mm-hmm. And you were talking about how you're looking to purchase a home together. Mm-hmm. Um, would you mind talking a little bit about that and maybe some of the challenges that it's bringing up or some of the things that are great or things that you have to consider as factors as a as a I guess living together um so one of the best parts about living with this particular metaphor is that the chores that I hate she loves and the chores that she hates I love so like separating the day-to-day house cleaning chores is super easy because I don't have to do the stuff that I don't like and she doesn't have to do the stuff that she doesn't like Bonus. It's perfect. <laughs> um, obviously, that's not how everyone's going to work. Yeah. Um, but, like, it's it's interesting because what it ends up doing as a... When you're living with someone that your partner is dating but not someone that you are dating, it adds a layer of um, relationship that you maybe don't expect with a metamor. Because mm-hmm. when you're seeing, like... If I have a metamor that I see once a year, like, I don't need to care. I mean, I care, but I don't need to, like, worry about what's going on in their lives. Mm-hmm. Whereas the metamor that I live with, she goes to school. So if she needs to get out of the driveway for class and I'm behind her, I have to take into consideration that, oh, I need to move my car. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's added... Um, It's little added everyday things that you don't necessarily think about because you're essentially like social media and pop culture shows you either the really, really silly problems that happen with monogamy or like these two people live together, they do everything together, it looks exactly perfect and it's easy and but that's not the case like it's hard enough to live two people it's even harder when it's a third person and it's not your child Mm -hmm. like three adults can add to um difficulties because everybody has different needs time management needs household management needs and so negotiating boundaries and negotiating um and and Um, making everything work smoothly takes a lot of conversation. It takes a lot of, um, leeway and, and being flexible with other people. Um, for the most part, it works really well. Um, I mean, we have issues, but everybody has issues. Yeah. I mean, Um, you know, I've had issues with roommates. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's just, uh, it's. It, it is a fact of life that people have difficulty living with each other. Yeah. Um, this trying to buy a house is a really interesting scenario because um, each of us has different requirements for our rooms. Like, I have two big dogs. They sleep in their very giant kennels. So I need a room that has space for my dog kennels. And um, 
my husband, he needs room in his room for his, um, his giant L-shaped desk. He needs a workshop because one of his hobbies is carpentry. Um, my metamor needs a giant hutch in her room because she plays a lot of video games and she has four different consoles. She also needs a desk because she's going to school. Mm -hmm. um, and so the majority of homes, like pre-built homes, 90% of the time assume that you are a two adult family with 2.5 kids and a dog. Um, so the bedroom sizes, so the are, not bedroom sizes are not even a little bit even. Um, there are some homes that have the master bedroom that's like the size of an entire wing and it's like 15 by 25 feet with a bathroom that's the size of a small bedroom and a closet that's bigger than some of the bedrooms. Right. And then the other rooms are 10 by 10. Right, right, right. And, and that's just, I mean, three adults, that's just not feasible for any of us. Um, and then, um, I'm really loud when I have sex. My metamor doesn't really want to hear my sex noises. So having rooms that are far away from each other, most houses, all of the rooms are on one floor mm -hmm. or they're all stacked on top of each other. And that creates, uh, more of an issue. And then when you factor in the needing to have some sort of like vaguely roommate floor plan, with the desire to have good shared space. Um, my metamor and I both crochet and I sew, so we need a craft room. Yeah. Um, we all do puzzles together, so we need a room that's got really good natural light and also fits the table that fits 5,000 piece puzzles on it. <laughs> we so both- your, your metamor also does the puzzles? I mm -hmm. you yeah, it's a, it's a everybody thing that we do, awesome. yeah. Um, it's super fun. Mm -hmm. Um, but then also like my metamor and my husband both cook a lot and I really like to bake mm -hmm. and we love having company over. So we want a kitchen where three people can move around without having to bump into each other constantly. Yeah. And so when you add these things together, that means the number of houses that are even remotely available for us are slimmer yeah. and usually more expensive because when you need more space you tend to get into the higher price range yeah yeah so finding all those things is difficult enough in a home and then finding them in the areas you want to live in the price range which works for you and then also a yard because we have two big dogs yeah um yeah, yeah. there's a lot of things to consider it's and and i mean it's entirely possible that some polycule finds a house where, like, there's a master and a bunch of small bedrooms and it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a matter of, you know, realizing that there are extra needs. It's, it's like doing, it's like doing um, the New York Times crossword. Doing a Monday crossword is really easy, but... The, the farther down you go by Sunday, it's impossible. So, like, we're three people. I'm sure there are polycules that have four and five people that would love to live together. Mm -hmm. I cannot even imagine what that looks like. Yeah. It's already hard enough with three, and, like, thinking about that just sounds horrendous. Yeah. And, and even part of that, too, is, like, we're looking for houses that are good for the three of us, but if down the line, one of us gets another partner that wants to live with us, that's going to either mean we have to move or it's going to mean we have to build on or it's mm -hmm. going to mean that we have to at least adjust how we're living. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, all of that makes so much sense. And I guess everybody has their own different needs, of course, right? But like some polycules who want to live together might, maybe one of the people travels a whole bunch so they don't need a, as big of a room or... Maybe they don't care about sex noises or they're super quiet, so it's okay if the rooms are all on one floor, but they would probably have then different requi requirements if they need a garage or whoever, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like the whole equity thing. It doesn't have to all be like the same house for everyone, but you got to find something that works for everyone in your, in your mm -hmm. community, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, it's interesting to hear, and of course, as being from New York, I always filter it through the New York living sort of experience with roommates and stuff, but purchasing is really different, and shared living space with roommates is really different than sharing with partners and minimalists. And then the legal aspect you can think about, too, because um, a lot of places have cohabitation laws, um, and... Um, particularly if there are children involved, because in my house there are no children, but I do know polycules that have lived together that do have kids. And this is a concern because um, if you have nosy neighbors that notice that there are a bunch of adults coming in and out, and then there are also kids, if you get like child protective services called on you, and then there's also cohabitation laws in your county, that can really screw with you. You mm-hmm. can You could go to court for it you mm-hmm. could get your kid taken away for it it's a big deal yeah. um or lose your home or, or lose, lose your ar- ability to have adults who aren't in the same legal family mm-hmm. yeah. um and then you can also think about the legal aspects of well who pays the mortgage whose name's on the lease whose name's on the mortgage mm-hmm. um because a lot of places if you have people who are not married like legally married all on the lease they, they are concerned by that. They don't want that. Um, and there are ways to get around it, but it's, I mean, it's still, you know, a legal risk at a certain point. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Open Photo Project.